I focus on project-based learning in, in my school. And a one of my biggest projects was my weather project that I did. And the students looked at real li uh, live data from the National Weather Service, looked at live satellite images, radar images. They looked at model data that Greg Fischel and WRAL would use and made an actual forecast. So I had them for, I had groups forecasting for the coast, groups forecasting for the Piedmont, and groups forecasting in the mountains. And we analyzed that data and, and they really understand why North Carolina experiences hurricanes and snow, you know, in just a very short distance and why, you know, here in Raleigh we we can get some snow, but really the coast will not, and how that plays in the role of um, the economy and the humanities part also. Um, some other projects I did, um, not real, more, I guess it's more like a STEM theme. They had to design a, a theme park based on the geologic time scale, and that was, that was the most fun project that I did and the students did, because it really got to show their creativity. And I think fostering the creativity in high school will help the students better prepared for uh, life after high school. We also worked together, and at some point we had to teach separately, and we saw that it was not quite as effective, that we did feed off of each other and help bring different aspects of um, the class to, um, to the students and it was able to be more of a cohesive um, thing that I didn't feel like we got as when we were teaching them individually. We were working and we're excited about our theme for STEM and um, actually our third partner is in science and so we're going to be trying to connect genetic engineering with my study in my lit class of Frankenstein and hoping and to incorporate the, the math, the math of, it. of that. And we share some of the same students. So we're going to try to start small. Hopefully to be contagious is one of the things Duke County, the STEM program, people are trying to get that to be our catchphrase, that we just want it to be contagious. We want other educators to get excited about what they see happening. So they'll want to try some things. We're also going to try to incorporate our agriculture teacher in that also because he has some ideas along that. So we think it would be an interesting blend because I teach biology, I wanted to do a cross-curricular project and uh, create a cell museum where our students would create uh, in different rooms different concepts about the cell. Then we would bring in seventh grade students to tour the museum and our students would communicate and discuss and teach the seventh grade. And then we incorporated a math component to that and then of course the communication skills and all this. Well, I've been wanting to do this forever, but I just thought, oh, this is too big. I just can't do this by myself. And I don't know why I hadn't thought about it before, but we, we our team's members changed this year, and we had some team members who had had some uh, experience with these big cross-curricular projects in other grade levels. Junior uh, level, we had not done any of these. So none of the, no the ones who'd been around in the junior team for a while, you know, were really knew how to do it. So we got these new guys and we said, okay, this is what we want to do. What do you think? Oh, I think it's a great idea. Next thing you know, we have a cell museum, and it was amazing, and we were just so tickled, but I would have not done it because it would have been too, just too much for me to do by myself. If it hadn't have been for that team, it would have not gotten done. One student in particular, great kid, really smart, really ambitious, and you know, he told me a personal story where he just felt like him being at his school, it was distracting him because of the girls because of outside influences. And he saw the middle college and he actually heard about it through a friend and checked it out. And he was like, you know, I wanna make just a better situation for myself and put myself in a positive environment. So I thought that was really uplifting and inspiring because it showed me that he was using his mind at such a young age to make the right decision. And he's, he's been on focus, he's been on, uh, stayed on track, completing work assignments, not, not a troubled student at all. Uh, just very bright, very energetic, and always has a lot to say, you know, gives criticism and feedback to me as well. He'll say, you know, Mr. Braswell, you can teach this way, or maybe you should try this one time. And that's one thing I actually encourage in my classroom. I want them to teach me as well as I'm, teach as, as I'm teaching them, because that's, I feel like that's how the partnership works, and that's how we both become better at, at what it is that we do.